115 in practice. What are we going to see? We're about to find out. Here he goes. Now the triumph of number 16, Michael Mace. Nice and steadily away. And now Samuel Mosley on the Yamaha. disappearing uh, under the bridge Andrea Mahola on the pattern see this away bike specialist Suzuki of number 18 Lewis Bramwell now away quick start now the Honda Brooks boys racing Alan Brooks number three And here's his moment. He said he couldn't wait. He's away. Ben Wales on the Yamaha bike number 11. The local boy, MB Racing Kawasaki of number five, Mike Brew. Next, the Suzuki of number 17, and that is David Brook. From Bradford. Now number 20, the first of the uh, newcomers B, Mark Kirby. Back to the A with number two, and it's uh, Quentin Limelzan. Irishman Liam Chalk is now away, bike number four. Yamaha of bike number 14. Number 14, Chris Stewart, safely away as well. The man from Glasgow. And from Glasgow to Valencia in Spain. Bike number one, Victor Ortega. Honda Power for the St. Petersburg rider, Daniela Grazniuk. Thirteen is next. Kawasaki of Paul Marley. Number eight is Christian Paluch on the Honda. Nineteen is uh, Wayne Borgies on the Kawasaki. Another Frenchman here. Six next. And six is uh, Ivo Laddy. Number 12, Chris North, is uh, getting flagged away next on his Kawasaki. And from Nottingham. Now we're into the C class. Pete Gibson is away, number 29. Andrew Jackson, number 27, on the Honda. And on the Wirral. Adrian Scaife now, number 30 away. Back into the Bs for the Pickering rider, David Stiff, number 25. These as well. Robert Cairns and Porter Down in Northern Ireland on a Kawasaki is away, number 21. <laughs> 31 is away, but there's uh, an extra entry in at the back of the field. Number 31 is uh, William PK on the Honda. And number 26 it is uh, away, 26, and that is. Russell Dodds uh, from Beedell. So uh, 26 is uh, no longer a non-starter. He's got an entry right at the end of the uh, field. And uh, that is everyone away. And the grid is uh, clearing. Of course, the scouts with 
all the nations uh, coming back towards the scoreboards. Let's go out to Glen Helen and Dave Christian. Thanks, Tim. You're uh, Bob on the money here as the first bike comes into view. It is uh, the number seven of Pierre Ibiyan, the distinctive Martin Moto livery Kawasaki. And uh, Yamaha, sorry. And uh, Pierre Yves Bien, he is, uh, well, he's well clear. I think we've had 10 seconds elapsed already. And uh, uh, here's the next man interview now. So Pierre looks like he's put uh, quite a good uh, opening sector into place. That is uh, Michael Mace, number 16. Uh, and he's closely followed on the road by Samuel Mosley. Uh, Mosley goes ahead of Mace, but uh, Pian is uh, six seconds clear of Mosley, who is the second quickest so far of the three through. These three appear to have put a bit of a gap in as well. Mosley uh, closing the gap to uh, the starting gap to uh, Michael Mace. And as uh, so the next man now comes into view, a little flick to the right, down the gear box, the left hand. That's the first one to be class. That's his. Uh, Andrea Mayola, and uh, he was closely followed on the road by Lewis Bramwell. As uh, three comes through now, that's Alan Brooks. Uh, Brooks goes into third place. So at the moment in Class A, it is uh, Pierre Yves Bian leads Michael Mosley by six seconds in third place. Number three, Alan Brooks. He's two seconds back on Mosley. Uh, fourth, number 16, Mike Mace. He is two seconds down on Brooks. And uh, fifth at the moment, number 18, Lewis Bramwell. He's a second and a half down on Mace. That's five through. That's Mike Frew, the local rider, closely followed on the road by 17 and 11. Uh, 17 is uh, David Brook and 11, Ben Wales. And it uh, looks like there's been a little bit of a shuffle round in the order there with uh, Michael uh, Michael Brew maybe uh, just dropping a couple of places there on the starting order. Uh, but they don't threaten the top end of that leaderboard. It is still uh, Pierre-Yves Bien with the six-second lead after the opening sector. And he leads number 15, Sam Mosley. Two more through now. Two and uh, 20. Uh, two is uh, Quentin Limousin. And uh, 20 is Mark Kirby. He's the second place in the B class. As uh, four comes through, Liam Chalk. And not threatening the top end of that A-class leaderboard. And at the moment in the B-class, it is Andrea Mayola leads number 20, Mark Kirby, by 15 seconds. At uh, one comes through, uh, Victor Ortega. And also there was number 14, Chris Stewart, uh, both safely through here on their opening laps. 10 comes through now, that is uh, Danila Krasniak. Uh, tenth place for Danila so far on his opening lap. Thirteen now, uh, that is thirteen. Uh, Paul Marley, he gets a couple of places there for Marley, moves into tenth position in the A-class race, uh, just hanging on to that top ten, but nobody at the, at the moment, as we expected, nobody is troubling. Pierre Ibian, number seven, uh, six seconds clear after just the first sector of the race. That is Christian Paluk, the Polish rider, uh, number eight, uh, just coming through, number eight, just safely through on his first lap, holding 15th position in that newcomer's A-class race. That's one of the B-class riders. That's number 19, Wayne Bourget. And uh, he is followed on the road by uh, number six, I think that was, Ivo Lada. And uh, Pierre Yves Bien, I can tell you, has made it to Balaf Bridge so far. Uh, only three of the uh, B class riders through. Andy, uh, Andrea Mayola, he leads. Number 22, Mayola, leads that B class. And uh, he is, uh, let me see, uh, five seconds clear of Quentin Limousin. Uh, sorry, he's not five seconds clear of Quentin Limousin at all. He is 15 seconds clear of Mark Kirby. And in third place in that B class, it's Wayne Bourget. Uh, Pierre Yves Bien, Sam Mosley, and Mike Mace all now threw up Balaf, and uh, Bien's lead is extended. It is now 11 seconds at Balaf Bridge. 27, that's the first of the C class bikes, and 29 through here now. Andrew Jackson leads that C class, number 27. Andrew Jackson leads by 12, 13 seconds, we'll call that. 12.7 he leads. Uh, leads number 29, Pete Gibson. Uh, Brooks now through a left as is Lewis Bramwell and Andrea Mayola. 
and it is Bian with that lead of 11 seconds of left bridge in third place it's Alan Brooks but he's closing in on Samuel Mosley uh, the gap was uh, two and a half seconds here at Glen Helen it's down to just over half a second up the left bridge so Alan Brooks closing in on that second place and uh, in the uh, B class it is only Andrea Mignola thinking through on the left so far 21 comes through Robert Cairns here at, uh, at Glen Helen and it is Pierre-Yves Bien, Sam Mosley, Alan Brooks, Mike Mace, Lewis Bramwell and Mike Brew all now through at the left bridge. And we'll uh, give you an updated B-class leaderboard here at Glen Helen. We'll just do a little bit of magic on the screen to filter them out. At Glen Helen, your leaderboard uh, in the B-class, it is number 22, Andrea Mayola. He leads number 20, Mark Kirby, by 15 seconds. In third place, it's number 9, Wayne Bourget. He is four seconds down on Kirby. In the C-class, uh, leading is number 27, Andrew Jackson. And he leads uh, number 30, Adrian Scaife, by six seconds. In third place in the C-class, number 29, Peter Gibson. Uh, Gibson uh, is six seconds down on Adrian Scaife. In fourth place, number 21, Robert Cairns, and he is 23 seconds back on Pete Gibson. And in fifth place in the B-class, it is number 26, uh, Russell Dodds. He is uh, nine seconds back on Robert Cairns. Mark Kirby now through at Balaf Bridge in the B-class, but uh, that lead of Andrea Mayola, that's uh, extended at Balaf Bridge. It's now out to over 20 seconds. In the C-class at Glen Helen, number 27, Andrew Jackson, leads number 30, Adrian Scaife, by six seconds. In third place, number 29, Pete Gibson. He is six seconds back on Scaife and making up the C-class. It's number 31. In fourth place, William P.K. He's 31 seconds back on Pete Gibson. Back to you at the grandstand. Thank you, Dave. At the Silby Speed Trap, both Mike Brew, number five, and number seven, Pierre-Yves Vian, 160.2 miles per hour, not hanging around at all. Uh, Miola, 23.9 seconds ahead of Kirby in the B race. And at Balaf, it's a 10.878 second advantage for number seven, Pierre-Yves Vian, over number 15, Samuel Mosley. C-class, a Still uh, in between Glen Helen and Balaf Bridge, uh, starting a course further down, straight to Ramsey, Roy Moore. Yep, broken the beam down the road. Pierre Yves Chabian is uh, certainly here up and here. Here he is now into Ramsey Hairpin. Just sticks his left foot out, uh, indicating possibly to us, I would think. Or is it uh, MotoGP style where they stick the left out? But he is trying hard and certainly through there. And lovely gear changing as well as he heads up towards the waterworks. But uh, we see the technique many times on MotoGP of trailing the leg on the inside of whatever the corner they're taking they say originally it was done by uh, Rossi I think to kind of assist on the wind and the braking second machine interview now this is 15 that's 16 my apologies that is Michael Mace but this is 15 so there he goes now 15 Michael Mace Sam Mosley uh, 14 seconds down but I think that will be changed a little bit yeah it will because it was 10 seconds of Balaf and it's up to 14 14.8 here at Ramsey Hairpin. So Pierre Yves Bian is certainly leading by that, but we've got number three to slot in there to see what the difference was. Alan Brooks, he was only a fraction of a second down on Sam Mosley, and there he is now, number three. He moves up into second place, 12 seconds down on the leader, but now two and a half seconds ahead of in third place, number 15, Sam Mosley. It's fourth place for 16, Michael Mace, five seconds down on Mosley, and fifth place for number 18, Lewis Bramall. And there's number 22 with us. There's the pattern going through, but not sounding good at all. In fact, I would say that's got a short lifespan because he's touring up the road virtually on the left-hand side. Number 22 just gone through safely, but uh, certainly he was leading that, was it? Yeah, Andrew Mahola was leading that, number 22, so that could be changed now. I think there's mechanical problems in that bike there. We're expecting David Brook and Mike Brew to be with us very, very shortly, and there is number five. That is Mike Brew and the distinctive blue fairing there, and there is number 17 through, David Brook. So that could be a bit of a change on there, but let's see how they sort themselves out. It's Alan Brooks lying second. 
He's three, 12 seconds down on Pierre Yves Bion. And then in third place, it is Sam Mosley, just two and a half seconds down on Brooks. Within th in third place, Sam Mosley, yep. Yeah. And in fourth place, Michael Mace. He is five and a half seconds down on Sam Mosley. Within fifth, pl fifth place, number 18, Lewis Bramwell. He's six seconds down on Mace. And then in sixth place, number 17, David Brook. Ten seconds down on Bramwell. Within fifth, seventh place, number five, Mike Brew. Four and a half seconds down on Brook. Another machine interview now. I think this might be number, tw number uh, two, that was, uh, Quentin Limerson. And certainly there, number four is amongst that lot that goes through as well, Liam Chalk. And then we got the fact that uh, there's been a change in, in at the top of the leaderboard. He has made Ramsey Hairpin, yeah, Mark Kirby. Mark Kirby second in the uh, Class B. Mark Kirby 31 seconds down on Andre Majola. But we did report that I don't think that machine, the pattern, is going too well. There's number one through. Victor Ortega, he's through as well. And there's number 14 as well. 14 is Chris Stewart. And behind him, very neat style indeed, uh, was we just got that one there. Number nine, Danila Kresnuk. So that's the Russian man through. And 13 is here with us now. We'll be pointing them all out. 13, Paul Marley. So when we see the north, Andrew Majola, number 22, was leading Class B here at Ramsey Hairpin. But I suggest that it has got problems with that machine. That will be probably highlighted as they climb the mountain up towards the bungalow. But going away from here and through the bungalow goes Pierre-Yves Bion. And certainly he's got set the time there to be eaten at it by Alan Brooks, number three. Will he make any inroads into the 12 seconds that the lead is here at Ramsey? Is number eight, Christian Paluk goes through. And certainly we can put them into a bit of an order on the numbering. We're just trying to uh, get Andrea Majola and then that possible change in lead there with number 20, I think it is, Mark Kirby. That could be the difference. But on the top of the leaderboard here at Ramsey, Sam Mosley has made the mountain climb. 19 seconds down on Pierre, Yves Bion, but certainly at 16. Michael Mace, 10 seconds, he's made the mountain climb as well. We're just seeing this, whether that pattern has made it up the mountain climb. Michael Mace is safely through the bungalow as well. There's a good battle on between three, Alan Brooks. He's 18 seconds down on Pierre-Yves Bion, but he's only one second ahead of, in third place, Sam Mosley. So there's a battle. 1.3, in fact, is the difference between second and third in Class A. Off the newcomers, Michael Mace is up there, 10 seconds down on Sam Mosley as they went through the bungalow. And in fifth place, number 18, Lewis Bramwell. He's eight seconds down on Michael Mace, the leader of Class B, not as yet at the bungalow, but certainly that is the lead in Class A as number 12 goes through. The last man to go through, Chris North. And it uh, looks as though Andrew Jackson is the leader of Class 3 here at Ramsey. Back to the grandstand. I'm pretty uh, sure that uh, Mahola is overdue at uh, the bungalow, so uh, that may well uh, be what Roy was saying, that uh, it didn't sound, it sounded like a, a, bo a box of nails, didn't it, as it left uh, Ramsey hairpin, but we'll obviously wait for official word, but uh, doesn't appear to have made it uh, up to the bungalow, but uh, Pierre-Yves Bian has, as has Alan Brooks, and the lead has gone from 12 seconds of Ramsey hairpin to 18 and a half seconds that uh, Brooks trails Pierre Yibian and the uh, light is now on for number seven and 22 I can tell you is a retirement that is Mahola a retirement at the Gooseneck so just a, a little bit up the road up the climb from Ramsey Hairpin so uh, good call you could hear it wasn't sounding good and a re confirmed retirement now at the Gooseneck but uh, Pierre Yibian safely at Cronk Nimona on this opening lap of the Manx Grand Prix Newcomers A race. And, uh, well, we'll wait to see uh, others there, but uh, shouldn't be too long before we uh, see him come uh, making that uh, very distinctive way round. Mark Kirby, I can tell you, he is at the bungalow in the B race, but we're going to be looking up Glen Crutchy Road towards Onken now, and emerging from the trees very shortly will be the French rider number seven, Pierre Yibian. Also 15 and 16 now at Cronk Nimona, but they're quite some way behind our race leader. Here he is. 
let's uh, just have a look. Uh, 116.161 miles per hour. So quicker than he's been in practice. He'd uh, clocked up 115 uh, in practice. 115. 0.550 miles per hour, but it's 116.161. Number three, Alan Brooks, 21.7 seconds back at uh, Kronk Nimona, number three, but he's in second, but now we should have 15 and 16. We've been pretty much together for most of this opening lap of the newcomers A race coming into our view now, and they're right together here. Samuel uh, Mosley at 113.634 miles per hour, number 15, and number 16, Michael Mace on the big triumph, 112.668 miles per hour. But uh, we've got to wait for Alan Brooks, bike number three, uh, to see what our leaderboard is in the newcomers' A, and here he is, crosses the line now, and he goes into second place, but it's an increasing margin that Pierre-Yves Bian has an advantage over number three, Alan Brooks, 23.771. As uh, 16 crosses the line and he's into fourth, that's Michael Mace. And uh, 18, uh, Lewis Bramwell was that last bike on the Suzuki at, and he's uh, into fifth place at the moment. So it's 23.771 seconds that uh, Bian leads Brooks. It's uh, Mosley on the Yamaha in third, Mace in fourth, and in fifth, the Suzuki of Bramwell. It was 113.846 miles per hour for Alan Brooks on the uh, opening lap, and his quickest in practice was 110.718. The uh, Ramsey hairpin, I can tell you that Mark Kirby, number uh, 20, and number 27, Andrew Jackson, were exactly tied in the lead on that. So across the line there. Mike Brew uh, is down into uh, seventh position. And uh, up is 17, David Brook drops to sixth as uh, we have uh, Bramwell in fifth, Mace in fourth, Mosley in third, Brooks in second, and uh, between Brooks and uh, Mosley, uh, 2.3 seconds is all that separates them in the A race. Kronk Nimona now for Mark Kirby, our leader in the B race. Ben Wales uh, across the line, but uh, he's some 50 seconds behind Mike Brew. So uh, number five uh, has a 50 second advantage over number 11, Ben Wales, in the battle uh, for seventh and eighth. And across the line, good scotch of bikes there. And I can tell you that was uh, Liam Chalk, the last of those. and. Uh, Quinton uh, Limousin as well was across the line. But now we wait for number 20, Mark Kirby. And there he is across the line. And Mark Kirby at 104.472. And he is your Class B leader. The only one as well so far as number one goes through. That's Victor Ortega. Victor Ortega, I can tell you, uh, is 11th currently in the A class. C class up at the bungalow, uh, Andrew uh, Jackson has a 16 second advantage uh, over number 30, Adrian Scaife, who in turn is 12.6 seconds ahead of number 29, Pete Gibson. The only uh, one through Kronk Nimona, though, in the B is the leader, Mark Kirby, number 20. But it's Pierre Yi Bian with a 23.7 second advantage. Let's go to uh, Dave Christian out at Glen Helen. 
Yes, uh, thanks, Tim. We can just hear engine noise now, and something yellow flashes out of Glen Helen too. Down the box, knee out, tips that in with a left-hander. Straight on the power at the apex, and uh, that's as textbook as you like from Pierre Ibien. He's certainly not having any problems at this sequence of bends, that's for sure. Uh, 23 seconds his lead was at the, at the grandstand. 23, well, we call it 24, 23.771 for what that's worth. Uh, 24 seconds is advantage. It didn't seem as quick as practice, but his lap time was quicker. So uh, everybody else was pushing a little bit harder. And uh, Pierre-Yves Bien, just a little bit quicker than in practice, but not that much. But the other guy's closing in because his, uh, his qualifying time was uh, streets ahead. And uh, not enjoying quite that advantage today, but uh, he's comfortably in front uh, with quite a big gap too. Next man on the road, uh, well, two men on the road, should be 15 and 16. It is 15 and 16 in that order, but uh, Samuel Mosley and Michael Mace. Uh, Mosley is in second place at the moment, pending the arrival of number three, Alan Brooks. Uh, Brooks uh, was holding second place at the grandstand. It looks like Yves Bien may have been, uh, he may have just uh, pushed out his lead. Uh, the gap between uh, Pierre Yves Bien and Simon, uh, Samuel Mosley was 31 seconds here at the grandstand. It was only 25, so it looks like he might just be stretching away now. There is number three, Alan Brooks, and indeed Brooks looks like he's had some sort of problem. Mosley's gone ahead of Brooks now, so Mosley into second place. 18 comes in, Lewis Bramwell. Uh, Bramwell holding fifth place here. Fifth place he was at the grandstand, so no change there. But uh, Pierre-Yves Bien has extended his lead. It was 24 seconds at the grandstand. It's now 31 here at Glen Helen on lap two. Uh, Samuel Mosley, number 15, is in second place. In third place, number three, Alan Brooks. He is three seconds down on Mosley. He was, in fact, two seconds ahead of him at the grandstand. So a five-second swing there between second and third. And Michael Mace, he was 10 seconds behind Mosley at the grandstand in fourth place. Number 16, Michael Mace. He is now seven seconds behind Alan Brooks. So looks like uh, Mace is catching Brooks and Mosley's caught and passed him. So uh, could be Alan Brooks just slowing down a little bit there. Uh, Lewis Bramwell, uh, 11 seconds at the grandstand. He's 14 here at Glen Helen. And uh, this is all in class A, of course. Uh, 14 seconds for fifth place. Next two through 17 and 5, 17 David Brook, 5 Mike Brew. Uh, David Brook was holding sixth place at the grandstand. He remains in sixth place now, number 17, David Brook. And uh, seventh place, Mike Brew, number five. He was seventh at the grandstand. He's seven here, so no change there either. It is uh, Pierre Ibian at the front of the race, 31 seconds clear, and that gap looks to be increasing from sector to sector. Uh, he is starting to ease away from the pack. But, of course, there is a compulsory pit stop at the end of this lap. And uh, as we know, uh, just about anything can happen down there in uh, pit lane. And uh, everybody will be just uh, twitching around up there, getting ready, making sure everything's in the right place. But uh, Pierre-Yves Bien has got plenty of time to take that pit stop nice and steady. Make sure he doesn't pick off any speeding penalties on the exit of pit lane. Uh, 11 comes through here now, uh, number 11, Ben Wales, uh, currently holding 8th place in uh, Class A. Uh, Pierre-Yves Bien, I can tell you, is at the left bridge already, so uh, he's well uh, ahead of the field. It's 4 comes through, and 2, 4, Liam Chalk, 2, Quentin Limousin. Uh, they're both safely through here on their second lap of the day as they try to uh, chase down uh, the race leader, Pierre-Yves Bien, but uh, with a 31-second lead, uh, they're not going to see him at all, I wouldn't have thought. Um, Samuel Mosley, second place, uh, just even, even, he's not keeping pace with uh, Pierre-Yves Bien, whose uh, qualifying time suggested he was significantly faster than the rest of the field, and that's just how it's turning out. That's the first of the B-class bikes. Victor Ortega, I think, but, uh, oh, no, sorry, Victor Ortega is the A-class, of course, first of the B-class bikes there, number 20, Mark Kirby, he is safely through here on his second lap, uh, but only the one of those B-class bikes through here so far with uh, the uh, unfortunate retirement of Andrea Mejola. Uh, Pierre Ibian, Sam Mosley now, and Mike Mace all through up the left bridge, number 7, 15, and 16. 
Uh, Pierre Yves Bien's lead was 31 seconds here at Glen Helen. It's out to 35 seconds at Bluff Bridge. So another four seconds for Pierre Yves Bien on the run from uh, uh, Glen Helen here down to Bluff. And uh, third place, Mike Mosley. Uh, he is uh, now pushed down to fourth as Alan Brooks comes through now. Brooks again falling away a little bit from Mosley. The gap was 2.7 here. And uh, Mosley's taken another two seconds out of him. Uh, that was number 14, uh, Chris Stewart, just coming through here. And uh, he's safely through on his second lap, but uh, not making too much inroad into the uh, riders ahead of him. Uh, Chris Stewart, number 14, he is in 15th place in Class A. Uh, the, the Russian rider, Daniela Krasniuk, uh, he's through here, number 10. He's 10th fastest in uh, newcomer Class A, uh, just holding on to a top 10 position. And uh, I'll quickly give a rundown of that uh, top 10 in Newcomers A. Uh, at Glen Helen, it's uh, Pierre Vian leads Samuel Mosley by 31 seconds. Number three, Alan Brooks, he's three seconds back. And uh, that is uh, number uh, six. Six it was, number six, Evo Ladder, just through here in class A, 16th fastest. Uh, outside of the top three, Mike Mace, number 16, is in fourth. He is eight seconds down on third place, Brooks. In fifth place, number 18, Lewis Bramwell. He's 14 seconds down on Mace. In sixth place, number 17, David Brook. He is 19 seconds down on Lewis Bramwell. In seventh place, number five, Mike Brew. He's 10 seconds down on David Brook. And in eighth place, number four, Liam Chalk. He is 29 seconds down on Brew. In ninth, number 13, Paul Marley. He is five seconds down on Chalk. York and making up your top 10, Daniela Krasniuk, number 10. He's five seconds down on Paul Marley. Just the one bike through so far in Class B. It's Mark Kirby. He is the leader on the road and on adjusted time. More from us later, though. It's time to go back to the grandstand. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Dave Christian. So at Belaf Bridge, it's Pierre Bian, who is 35 and a half seconds ahead of number 15, Samuel Mosley. Uh, uh, Mosley, sorry. Let's go to Ramsey Hairpin, Roy Moore. Yeah, all speculation here, but we feel as though Alan Brooks might be the one who's probably uh, missed a gear or just not quite got an apex right and uh, dropped a few seconds there on the run. But we'll be able to bring that all to you as we're waiting for the race leader here at Ramsey Hairpin, number seven. The distinctive uh, red plates, it might have been, yeah, and out goes the left foot again. It might be an acknowledgement, but the Marty Motors bike is certainly well through. We did see Victor Lopez Santos the other day. He looked very, very sore indeed. He had an off hot derby, but this will be cheering him up a little bit, knowing that his uh, team are out there in front and it will be the first pit stop. But again, unlike the others, they probably will have had a bit of experience of getting of what's involved in a pit stop. Not only getting the uh, the tap tap off, but certainly the filling and the wiping of the screen and everything. Uh, when I say these things, I can say it with experience because it was 2015 when the eldest son did all that and there was a great deal of hilarity about uh, Ratchet Curfee. He devised a system whereby he was so nervous in getting the top off that he cut a socket in uh, half or took a big groove out of a socket just to knock that tension that was built up. But there's two machines in the view now, Sam Mosley and Michael Mace. We expect them to be 15 and 16, and that is the case. So they've got their battle on the road. But certainly it's 38 seconds the lead has gone out to. So a further three seconds on the run from the left bridge here to Ramsey Hairpin, race leader, Pierre Yves Bian is pulled out now to 38 seconds advantage over in second place Samuel Mosley. In third place, it is, uh, well, it should be when he gets here. We're expecting him to be the next to get here. Michael Mace is through. This could be number three, Alan Brooks, is it? It certainly is. He certainly is tight on the, the exit and through and round. Very good riding, very neat indeed. And certainly Sam Mosley, well, there's only four seconds between second and third. Holding on to that second place is Sam Mosley, 38 seconds behind the leader. But it's Alan Brooks now who's up to only four seconds down on Sam Mosley. Michael Mace holds on to fourth. That's Lewis Bramwell, number 18. You can hear going round in the background there and run through. Well, as uh, in fourth place, Michael Mace, six seconds down on Alan Brooks. So he has pulled, well, he's lost a further second there. So maybe that might have been a good assumption that uh, the four seconds at uh, Balaf Bridge just might have been just missing that apex. Remember, these are newcomers. 
and certainly uh, I think there'll be a lot of activity up there in the grandstand searching all the uh, routing in boxes and stuff to see if they can find a French national anthem. We were kind of put on the spot as we can remember any French winners over the TT Mountain course. I think Jack Finley rode under a French license, but he was an Australian, so that doesn't count. But certainly it might be a, a very, very significant uh, factor in this might be the first ever time if things go to plan for the French national anthem. Alan Brooks and Michael Mace are through. Lewis Bramwell is through. 17, David Brook should be the next interview now here at Ramsey. Back end squibbling about and it is number 17. And back to Dave Christian. Yeah, thanks, Roy. I can just give you the uh, top three in the B and C classes at Glen Helen on lap two. In newcomers class B, leading number 20. At uh, number 20, leading Mark Kirby. And uh, he leads number t uh, 21, uh, Robert Cairns. And in third place, number 25, David Stiff. In the C class, uh, leading is uh, number 27, Andrew Jackson. He leads at number, uh, number 30, Adrian Scaife. And in third place, number 29, Pete Gibson. Back to you, Roy. Yeah, that name that you just mentioned there, there has been a previous winner of a newcomer's race round here, Andrew Jackson, not the Preston Jacksons, but the Kendall Jacksons. And Bud is always remembered with affection here in the commentary box at Ramsey Hairpin, but it was the younger brother, Alan Andrew Jackson, who won a Manx Grand Prix newcomers many years ago. Let's give you an update. We just get this rider through. I think it's Ben Wales, number 11. It certainly is. Just tucks it round nicely, and he's followed by there, number two, Quentin, no, number four, my apologies there, Liam Chalk. So I think the Roberts family will be checking that one out, and this is number two, just caught us unaware, Clinton Limousine, he's certainly through, so that gives us an update on at Ramsey Hairpin, Class A, leading Pierre Sa Yabs Bian. He is 38 seconds ahead of in second place, number 15, Sam Mosley. Sam Mosley, in turn, is four seconds ahead of in third place, number three, Alan Brooks. Fourth for number 16, Michael May, six seconds down. Six seconds down, we just checked that one, 5.929. And then in fourth place, Michael Mace, five, six seconds down on Alan Brooks. Fifth for number uh, six, 18, Lewis Bramwell. He's 16 seconds down on Mace. Sixth place, David Brook, 26 seconds down on Bramwell. Seventh for local rider, number five, Mike Brew. 10 seconds only down on David Brook. In eighth, number four, Liam Chalk, 29 seconds down on Mike Brew. And then Paul Marley, as somebody misses some gears going up towards the waterworks. In ninth place, 13, Paul Marley, seven seconds down on Liam Chalk. Then Quentin Limousin, number 10, he is four seconds only down on Paul Marley. 11th for Danila Karisniuk, he is one second only down on Quentin Limousin. And our race leader from there, number 20, Matt Kirby, is through Ramsey Hairpin, number 20. So we'll just give positions then in 12th place, Victor Ortega in 12th, 13th place Ben Wales and in 14th place through Ramsey here Christian Paluk with 15th number 14 Chris Stewart race leader number 20 Matt Kirby safely through here and Andrew Jackson is just here but somebody's just taking it round now number 8 safely through Ramsey back to the grandstand Thank you, Roy. Uh, yes, at uh, the end of lap one, 116 was for uh, the leader here, Pierre Yi Bian in Newcomers A, and light now on for number seven, Pierre Yi Bian at Cronk Namona. Uh, for number 20 in the uh, B class, uh, Mark Kirby, who's uh, absolutely a country mile ahead, 104.472 miles per hour at the end of lap one. And in the C class, Andrew Jackson. Uh, is uh, the leader there, number 27, and his opening lap, 100.207 miles per hour. Three races within one, if you like, but uh, Pierre Yi Bian is the first one uh, to have made it to Cronk Namona. At Balaf Bridge in the C class, Andrew Jackson has a 27.462 second advantage over number 30, Adrian Scaife. And at Ramsey Hairpin, Mark Kirby is there. 
at Blackbridge. She's over three minutes in the lead. But let's uh, see now the pit stop, a compulsory pit stop for Pierre Yibian, 15 and 16, Mosley and Mace are indicated. Now at Cronk Nimona will give you the uh, slowing down. It's a roughly 116 sort of area once again. 115.390 slowing down. Let's go straight down to Chris Kinley. Here's our leader in the A class. 36.407 seconds the lead at Cronk the Motor over 15 Samuel Mosley the Michael Mace just left the motor on a little bit long he's just telling him the boys in the pits just tell him to be nice and calm that's all he has to be here pretty good lap on the first one 116 one one and just over 115 on the second lap slowing down for that pit stop but in control of this newcomer's a four lap race should have the next riders coming in very shortly with a klaxon go in the background the last little bit of fuel's going on and the guy's just got a little board up just telling him exactly where he is just giving him information just tell him to be nice and calm that little arm gesture he's just giving him there just to be nice and steady nice and calm there goes the klaxon once more we'll have a couple more runners coming into where the old stop box used to be at the top end of pit lane to where you guys at the grandstand run your right he's just coming in there now so number seven Pierre Yves Beyond is just about to leave us and here's number 15 is it in yeah it is 15 in, so Samuel Mosley, it's 38.403 for Samuel Mosley, and he is confirmed in that second place, and his lap time on that lap, I'll just give it to you now, was Samuel Mosley, 114.19, and Michael Mason, third, number 16, 113.97, but Michael Mason, number 16, is 12 and a half seconds back, so he's lost a bit of time, but we've got to wait for Alan Brooks to come in, and he is just opposite us here now, and this should be him next in, and he crosses over over the transponder beam and let's give you the details on that one Alan Brooks yeah nice and steady don't lose any time in those pits to, into that pit limiter he's lost in fact no he's gained a second on Samuel Mosley coming into the pits so the leaderboard 7, 15, 3 and 16 and at 16 you can just hear the triumph going off in the background Michael Mace he's only 5 5.898 back of Alan Brooks in third and Brooks is only 6.6 .6 off the back of Samuel Mosley who's just left the pits there now Lewis Bramwell into the pits he is in fifth place at the moment the number 18 machine and the last little bit of fuel just about to pop in for Alan Brooks there now 6.612 back and what did he do on that lap well nice to give you the, uh, the lap speeds for these guys because it is nice that they do have people uh, all over the circuit Lewis Bramwell 111.92 and Alan Brooks 113.34 you hear the Honda CBR <laughs> rev up and he's just had a little check just to make sure he's in gear and well hopefully not going to take it nice and steady yeah very good Chris Palmer talked about this in practice about setting that limiter to about between 53 and 57 it's about right because you do not want to be losing all your time in the pits number 18 just having a few problems getting it fired she's going to have to be pushed so number 18 Lewis Bramwell has a 30 second lead through Cronk Nimona on number 17 David Brook and the Manxman number 5 Mike Brew but I don't think after the pit stops let's give it then uh, Bian had a 1 minute and 8 and Mosley had a 1 minute and 2 and we got Brooks he had a 1 minute and 1 and 16 Mace he had a 59.3 any changes Tim? No was just, Brooks was uh, 6.7 seconds quicker than uh, Bian in the pit but Bian is going to still have about a 30 second lead it was close between Mosley and Mace it was about 3.4 at Crunk Namona, and it's about the same time that Mace was quicker, so it's going to be very tight for who's going to get me third. So we'll have to wait at Glen Helen for Dave. Okay, thanks very much to Tim O'Hanlon. So we've got uh, Mike Bruce in here. Mike's in for his pit stop, the number five man. He's been through his hometown of Kurt Michael. Excellent stuff he is in, but it's the B class, Tim. We need to keep an eye on. They'll be bungalow, Cronk Namona, that sort of area. Uh, B class, uh, Mark Kirby, number 20, is the only one to have made it to the bungalow. At Ramsey Hairpin, Kirby had a three minute 40.171 second advantage over number 21, Robert Cairns, and then a 15 second gap. Uh, back to number 25, David Stiff. And in the C class, Andrew Jackson is the leader at Ramsey Hairpin, number 27. He's 34 seconds ahead of number 30, Adrian Scaife, with number 29, Pete Gibson, 20.7 uh, 20 seconds further back. <coughs> uh, Mark Kirby is now at Cronk Nimona, and I think uh, no one else in the B class yet has made Ramsey hairpin. 
I can tell you as well that uh, Wayne uh, Bourgier, uh, number 19, is a retirement at Glen Tramon. That is bike number 19, so he's one of the B-class uh, contenders. Samuel uh, Mosley did his quickest lap of the race on lap two at 114.187 seconds in the A race. Victor Ortega should be coming into the pits very shortly, uh, but it is Mark Kirby we're keeping an eye on. Uh, to see when he arrives here at the pits. At the bungalow now, Andrew Jackson has made it up the climb from Ramsey Hairpin in the Newcomers' C. Uh, but there's a whole, uh, a whole row of bikes coming in, Chris, and in amongst this will be bike number 20, uh, Mark Kirby. And I think this might be him now. No, that's 10, so it'll be the next one in, Chris. We'll come down to you as it is now. Number 20 in, just weaving the speed off as he comes in. And uh, Kirby, I can tell you, did a lap there of uh, 104.91. Down to you, Chris. Very similar to what he did on the first lap. So number 20 in for the pit stop. Number 10 is also in there, Daniela Krosniuk also in so Kirby in looking pretty good looking pretty safe in that first position don't forget we've got another class to get in here yet but the leaders won't be too far away from Dave Christian at Glen Helen as we get number 14 he was quick in there Chris Stewart on the Yamaha and he's uh, holding on to a pretty good leaderboard position at the moment back to Dave Christian yes thanks Chris uh, Pierre Yves Bien through here uh, absolutely perfect as he has been the first two laps uh, so everything looks to be going well for him uh, he picks a really great line carries his corner speed well doesn't get on the throttle too early there's always a little bit of a neg um, adverse camber there on the exit and uh, if you get the throttle on too quickly can drag you in towards the gutter and of course there's uh, 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 rectus L barriers up there and uh, you don't want to be caught up with one of those uh, but uh, no problems from Pierre Yves absolutely perfect line through here and uh, he seems to be running a very very good race indeed 38 seconds the advantage draws going into pit lane here's the next two Mosley and Mace in that order Mosley at 30 Three seconds now, the lead. It was 38 seconds going into pit lane. Uh, Pierre Yves number seven, now leads uh, number 15, Samuel Mosley, by 33 seconds. So Mosley's managed to pull five seconds back in pit lane. Uh, Michael Mace currently third, but Alan Brooks, number three, uh, was there and thereabouts uh, going into the pit lane. So we just wait for him to come through before we update that leaderboard. Uh, number three, Alan Brooks should be the next man on the road uh, as the top three all now safely through here and making their way along towards uh, Kronkavody and Kirk Michael and uh, on to Valaf Bridge where our next time and point is. Uh, here is the next man though, down the gearbox, wide on the approach, in tight to the wall and uh, yeah, great line there from Alan Brooks, but it's not enough to give him third place. Michael Mace is on the move. Uh, Mace, number 16, was fourth going into pit lane. He is now in third place. He is 12 seconds down on second place, Sam Mosley. But he is seven seconds clear of fourth place, number three, Alan Brooks. 18, Lewis Bramwell comes through here. Uh, Bramwell was fifth place going into the pit lane. He is still in fifth place, and the gap is virtually identical. So Lewis Bramwell holding station to fourth place. 32 and a half seconds it was going into the pits, and 32 and a half seconds it is here at Glen Helen on lap three. So uh, Pierre Bien, that lead reduced, but I don't think that's going to be any cause for concern. He was certainly fast and accurate when he came through here and uh, very smooth as well and of course everybody says around here smooth is fast and uh, he was definitely smooth uh, 33 seconds the advantage now for uh, number seven pierre yves bien and uh, michael mace and samuel mosley uh, can have a little bit of a scrap there for that second place there's about 11 and a half seconds the difference between the two and alan brooks still in with the shot because he's only seven seconds back on third place michael mace so a three-way battle there potentially for those uh, remaining two podium spaces next man or next two men come out of glen helen too onto the anchors in the left hander little foot off the uh, left hand peg there from number 17 david brook uh, but with that we'll uh, just go to chris kinley in the pits well, number 12 just in for his pit stop. That's Chris North, who Chris Palmer was helping out with suspension. That machine in the background is the number 27 machine of Andrew Jackson. 
and he's obviously just had to do a little stop and dab his foot on the deck and then get pushed away. He doesn't need to stop for fuel on that Moto3 machine. Chris Palmer just bring you in on this one. So obviously, just explain from a rider's point of view what he's done there. Explain it. Yeah, it's a mandatory pit stop, so he's had to come in and stop anyway. But because he doesn't need to take any fuel on board, he's obviously got a big enough tank to do the uh, three laps. It's just mandatory. He has to come in and basically stop, put his foot down, and then go again. So apart from you know, no fuel taken on board, but he still has to come in the pits. Thank you very much, Chris. Back to Dave Christian. Yeah, thanks. The last uh, two men through here were number 17, uh, David Brook, and number five, Mark Brew. Uh, they slot into sixth and seventh place in the newcomers' A-class leaderboard. Uh, number 17, David Brook, is sixth place. He is 27 seconds down on fifth place, Lewis Bramwell. And in seventh place, number five, Mike Brew. He is nine seconds down on David Brook. Uh, those are the approximate times when they went into pit lane as well, so nothing uh, too, too much gained or lost for either either of those two riders and they've got a little bit of work to do if they want to improve their placings Mike Brew potentially could catch David Brook with only nine seconds in it but uh, it's a bit of a big gap then from Brook up to Bramwell two more through 11 and 4 11 Ben Wales for Liam Chalk uh, Liam Chalk holds eighth place and Ben Wales currently ninth and I suspect he's going to get pushed down the order with number 13 Paul Marley number 2 Quentin Limousin number 10 Daniela Krasniuk uh, when those guys get here we'll see a bit of a shift at the top end of that leaderboard there's the first one of them Quentin Limousin he pushes Ben Wales uh, into 10th place and I suspect we're going to see uh, maybe Paul Marley as well, number 13. He may just push his way into the top 10. He was ninth on the entry into pit lane. But it's very tight between uh, Limousin and Krasniuk, the Frenchman and the Russian. Uh, there was only uh, two tenths of a second separating them and they went into pit lane. So we could see a little bit of shift there between 10th and 11th place. Next man in is, uh, that's Victor Ortega. Nice and steady from Victor Ortega. Not cut, uh, quite the visual speed that uh, Pierre Pian has. There is Paul Marley. He does indeed go into the top 10. Ninth place for number 13, Paul Marley. Uh, ninth place, 18 seconds down on eighth place. Tenth there, Danila Krasniuk. There's the Russian. And uh, indeed, he is just nudged out of the top 10. And uh, that's time lost in pit lane there. He was 11th place going into the pits and now finds himself down into 12th. Next man into the left-hander again. A much steadier approach, number 14, Chris Stewart. Uh, he was 15th place going into the pits. He is currently in 14th. And uh, that is the first of the B-class through. Mark Kirby, uh, who was absolutely streets ahead at pit lane. And in fact, I don't think we've got the second man through the pits just yet in that B-class. Pierre Ibian now has made Balaf Bridge. He leads number seven, Pierre Ibian. He leads number 15 at Balaf, Samuel Mosley. The gap now 35 seconds, so Bian starting to pull away again. In third place at Balaf, it's number 16, Michael Mace. He's 11 seconds down on second place. Back to you at the grandstand. Thank you very much. Just going to the B-class here at the grandstand. Mark Kirby, four minutes, 11 seconds ahead of number 21, Robert Cairn and a further 31 and a half seconds back in third. Number 25, David Stiff at Balaf Bridge, Pierre-Yves Bian. 35.3 seconds ahead, number seven of number 15, Samuel Mosley. And in third place, number 16, 11 seconds back, Michael Mace. That's the top three at Balaf Bridge. And let's go to Ramsey Hairpin, Roy Moore. Yep, I'm sure you'll be absolutely bang on cue here at Ramsey because the beam has been broken down the road for the third time by number seven, Pierre-Yves Bian. And certainly he is here. He's got a lovely line through Ramsey. There's absolutely no problem at all. He takes it. We didn't quite notice there. We were just checking the screen to make sure. But I don't think on that particular occasion he had the left leg trailing as he came in. So that must have been some indication maybe. Maybe it even... Well, we, we know when uh, we get kind of things sent back that uh, the mechanics know, well, if you do this at Ramsey, the commentator will uh, comment on it and that we know then. I think it happened many, many years ago. I think it was on a win and somebody came into Ramsey and did some indication about gear changing. And certainly, I think he got it through to through the to the particular win. But certainly, that is the indication there. So a good gap there. 35 seconds was the advantage. As the second and third machines now have broken the beam down the road and into them into the corner comes number 15, just slightly ahead there on the road. Sam Mosley ahead off 
Michael Mace, number 16, who is through. There's 15 seconds between them pair on the road, but we've got to wait for the arrival of Alan Brooks to see whether there's any problems there, that 15 seconds was the difference, but certainly no difference from Balaf. In fact, a couple of seconds taken out on the run from Balaf. Two here at Ramsey by second place Sam Mosley, but it's still 33 seconds that Pierre Yves Bion leads th Sam Mosley, number 15, 33.369 to be exact within third place here. Michael Mace, 15 and 15 seconds down on Mosley. It might just be that on different sectors, they've learned that one quickly. They haven't had the best of weeks to get all dialed in and they haven't had the best of road conditions. So with perfect conditions here today on the roads, he is Alan Brooks now. He's maintaining that 15 seconds here at Ramsey, number three. And he too, very neat and tidy. Alan Brooks through Ramsey and holding on to that fourth position, but still at 15 seconds down, off in third place. Third place there, Michael Mace. Lewis Bramwell shouldn't be too far away from approaching us here. Now 18, he was holding on to fifth place, 32 seconds down. Let's see what the difference is here at Ramsey. It's up to 34, just there he goes. And that sounds really crisp as it goes up towards the waterworks, different exhaust systems, remember, on these machines, and certainly getting a little bit more noisy, if you can call it that, through Ramsey, but still that 34 seconds down now, on in fourth place, uh, Alan Brooks is Lewis Bramwell, so he's holding on to fifth, be interesting to see Mike Brew going through, he couldn't be, shouldn't be too far away now, would have been pretty handy, I would think, if we had different coloured numbers all on the red, although the computer technology sorts them out into 000, zero, zero to be the class leader. Uh, certainly, it would have been probably a little bit better if we could have distinguished them between colours. But we were, did were notice number 31, William Piquet, famous name there, Formula One driver, Nelson Piquet, both laps that he's been through here, he has been quite wide. And it causes a bit of apprehension in the box, but certainly gets it round. This should be number five, is it? No, number 17 that's here with us now. That's David Brook. So David Brook holding on to sixth at Balaf. 26 seconds down. He's pulled a couple of seconds back. And here is number five, Mike Brew. Mike Brew, a different line. He goes a bit Ian Locker style on the outside of the white line, but certainly away and probably uses this route quite a lot because he works at Nobles Hospital and has had full backing, I believe, in the canteen. Many is the time it's been discussed there about Mike Brew's debut in the Manx Grand Prix newcomers uh, because he's got some very, very good tutors up there in Stephen Oates, travelling marshal, and also Brian Appleton, who was a regular competitor round here in the, the 37 and three quarter mountain course so who else would be involved in this they seem to be well spread out remember in third the uh, class three it was only got to do three laps so that will clear them for the final lap but certainly through Balaf Bridge, who would we expect to see next? Liam Chalk, I would suggest. Number four would be the next into Ramsey Hairpin, but 52 seconds down on Mike Brew at Balaf on this particular lap. So that is the case there. Victor Ortega, he's due through as well, and Quentin Limerson, he's due as well. But certainly the road, as they say, goes quiet down here. But Andrew Jackson, he was setting a good pace too. He's got a very, very neat style through here. Ramsey, Andrew Jackson on the Falcon Electrical. Uh, certainly the little uh, little single cylinder there. And it sounds well as it goes away from Ramsey Hairpin up towards the waterworks. But another machine, this should be number 11, Ben Wales, I think. Yeah, and that is the case. So all the supporters of Ben will be happy to hear that he's made Ramsey Hairpin. But he's 1 minute and 41 seconds down on Mike Brew and holding on to 8th place so no change there we've got to wait for Liam Chalk or has Liam Chalk not made it here to Ramsey Hairpin he had gone through Balaf Bridge number 4 Liam Chalk 52 seconds down on Mike Brew but now into ninth place here goes Ben Wales just 5 seconds down on Quentin Limerson I think this could be him here certainly he makes a big effort coming into Ramsey Hairpin Quentin Limerson he had the back locked up and seems to go a little bit wild as he dissed away, but certainly eighth place behind Mike Brew, but one minute and 35 seconds down on him. But Ben Wales is only five seconds behind Quentin Limerson here at Ramsey Hairpin. 
Uh, we're looking at the bungalow Pierre Yi Bian is, uh, well, 36 seconds ahead, but he's now up at Kronk Nimona. Let's have a quick update from Dave Christian. Yes, uh, thanks. I got the B and C classes at Glen Helen on lap three. In the B class, number 20, Mark Kirby. He leads number 21, Robert Cairns, by four minutes and 14 seconds. In third place, number 25, David Stiff. He is 38 seconds down on Cairns. In the C class, on their final lap, number 27, Andrew Jackson, leads number 30, Adrian Scaife, by 51 seconds. And in third place is number 29, Pete Gibson, who's 24 seconds down on Scaife. Back to you at the grandstand. Thank you. As we await uh, our leader, the Frenchman Pierre Yves Bien, has uh, safely made it to Cronk Nimona. He'll be about to go out on his fourth and final lap, coming out of Governor's Dip as we look up Glen Crutchu Road. It's listening out, listening out, leaning out as well. Should be into view any second now. Our leader, here he is, on to his final lap. Yeah, you bien. 109.504. Of course, that did uh, include over a minute here in the pits and slowing down and accelerating out of the pits. So Kronk Nimona lights on for 15 and 16 as well. In the C class, Andrew Jackson has made it now to the lap bridge and is 55 seconds ahead. Number 27 of, from number 30, Adrian Scaife. And uh, in turn, he is 23.6 seconds ahead of number 29, Pete Gibson. C Classic course on their final lap, doing the three laps. The A and the B uh, do four. Leader in the uh, B, Mark Kirby, the only man to have made it to the lap bridge and to Ramsey Hairpin. But now we should uh, see numbers 15 and 16. Through there was uh, number 15, Samuel Mosley, at 109.75, so slightly quicker, uh, but that includes the pit stop as well. And through there is number 16, Michael Mace, on the triumph at 108.79. So it is Pierre Yves Bian who is leading by 35. 0.641 seconds, so an extended advantage uh, by about two seconds on the run from Kronk Nimona to the grandstand. Mosley is in second place, number 15, and he is 23.413 seconds ahead of number 16, Michael Mace. Lights on for number three, Alan Brooks, and number 18, Lewis Bramwell at Kronk Nimona. And we should see Alan Brooks anytime soon coming into our view here at the grandstand on Glen Crutchery Road. Can hear a machine approaching. Across the line he goes onto his final lap. And that uh, puts Brooks 15 seconds, the margin he is down on Michael Mace, who's third, number 16. Brooks, number three, in fourth position, 15 seconds back. And now we should see Lewis Bramwell come into our sights here at the grandstand. Currently running in fifth, but he was 37 and a half seconds down at Kronk Nimona. And it's 37.2 that he's down on Brooks in fourth. So number 18, Lewis Bramwell in fifth. Light on also for number 17, David Brook. He was sixth at Kronk Nimona. Another retirement and uh, our Russian uh, friend has retired there at Sulby Bridge. At number 10, at Danilia Kruzniak. And in C, Andrew Jackson is through Ramsey Hairpin at that 55 second lead. And also in the B class, I can tell you, our second rider has made uh, the lap bridge four and a half minutes and more uh, behind the lead. And number 20, Mark Kirby, number 21, Robert Cairns at the lap bridge and number 25, David Stiff, 42 and a half seconds further back is in third position. Andrew Jackson, though, at Ramsey Hairpin in the C-Class on his finals lap of the TT course in the three-lap C race. A 17 crosses the line now and uh, Lewis, uh, uh, David Brook, 107.688 miles per hour. And uh, he goes uh, into uh, 
sorry, he is in sick position, David Brook. Uh, Mike Brew, the light on for him at Cronk Nimona, and we should uh, see him coming past us here as well very soon. There he is, Kurt Michael Ryder, and his lap 105.806 miles per hour. So in the A-class Pierre Yi Bian is uh, out and on his own at the moment, 35.641 seconds. Can he nurse that bike now through uh, our commentary position at Glen Helen and then Ramsey Hairpin and uh, back over the mountain here to the grandstand to claim a famous win. Dave Christian, Glen Helen. Yes, uh, thanks, Tim. 35 seconds is advantage, 35.6 at the grandstand. He's got plenty of time to play with. If he's got some decent boards out there for him, it uh, shouldn't be too much of a drama. But uh, he has got two-thirds of a lap or so to go. We can hear engine noise coming up the valley. A little bit of a stir from the spectators. And the uh, bike flashes out at Glen Helen too. A little flick to the right, onto the brakes, down the gearbox. And he comes out drives on the power absolutely line perfect lap after lap after lap it's like uh, metronomic around here uh, he just follows that same line every time bob on the money and uh, no problems at all there for him uh, pierre yves bien safely through here and we'll go back to uh, roy moore for a quick update on the other classes yeah there was plenty of action at the grandstand so we didn't come back to ramsey but we did see going safely through on his final lap number 27 andrew jackson and he held at an advantage there over in second place. There's only three of them circulating. Remember, number 30, Adrian Scaife of one minute. One minute was the advantage for number 27 over Andrew Jackson. And then in third place was number 29, Peter Gibson, 22 seconds down. And Adrian Scaife, and remember, they are on their final lap. So the race leader off the uh, Class A, safely through Glen Helen, heading to Balaf Bridge on his final lap. But Class C, back to Dave Christian at Glen Helen. Yes, uh, thanks for that, Roy. Sam Mosley just through here on his final lap, number 15. Second place, the advantage, 35 seconds at the grandstand to Pierre-Yves Bien. It's 35 seconds here, so it looks like the Frenchman is getting some signals somewhere. He's not extending his lead any further. Next man comes in, though. This is 16, Mike Mace. He was a little bit slower on approach. And he's short shifting as he goes up the hill, so that could be a problem there for Michael Mace. He definitely shifted that one short. Uh, number 16, Michael Mace. He's dropped time. He was only 23 seconds down on Mosley at the grandstand. He's now 39, nearly 40 seconds down, so 17 seconds lost in the sector. A short shift going up the hill. It looks like Michael Mace has got some problems there, and uh, we'll have to wait and see if he makes it to the left, but uh, it could be good news for Alan Brooks. He was only 15 seconds behind mace when they came through glen crutchery road and uh, that looks like uh, alan brooks might just sneak into third place here on this last lap uh, desperate news for mike mace but uh, we'll have to wait and see when brooks gets here here is a machine it is number three he gets onto the power and drives away and the gap's down uh, it is nine seconds just nine seconds now between brooks and mace so uh, Alan Brooks still holds that fourth place. Michael Mace still holds on to third, but the gap was 15 seconds at the grandstand. It's down to nine here at Glen Helen. So it looks like uh, that's some trouble there for Mike Mace. 18 comes through now, Lewis Bramwell. He was 37 seconds down on Brooks. He's 33 seconds down on Brooks now in fifth place. So no big swing there, a couple of seconds, but uh, I don't see that being a position change at all. Uh, number 17 should be the next man, uh, David Brook. Uh, he was 23 and a half seconds down on 18, Lewis Bramwell at the grandstand. And uh, see if he's made any inroads. But uh, Michael Mace, number uh, 16, and Alan Brooks, number three, they're in third and fourth position. There's a little bit of a battle going to go on there for that uh, third step on the podium. And it uh, looks like Brooks is starting to close in on Mace as we await the arrival of number 17, Brook, And also not too far behind him will be uh, the uh, local interest, uh, number five, Mike Brew. Uh, he was seventh place at the grandstand, and with eighth place, Paul Marley, and ninth place, Quentin Nimozan. Uh, machine does now come out of Glen Helen too. Tips that in, good and early there. That is 17, David Brook. 
Uh, 23 seconds he was down at the grandstand in sixth place. He is now 22 seconds down in sixth place. So he's pulled a second on Lewis Bramwell, but I don't think that's going to be uh, significant in the great scheme of things. Uh, the big uh, mover there could be in the th third and fourth place. Uh, next man on the road, well, we've got Paul Marley to come. He wasn't too far away from uh, uh, David, uh, from Mike Brew and Quentin Limousin, Ben Wales, Victor Ortega and Chris Stewart all to come. Uh, the gaps between some of those are pretty tight as well. Uh, that's number five, Mike Brew. And uh, he is holding on to that uh, seventh place. Seventh at the grandstand, 34 seconds. He's seventh now, and that uh, is extending out now. He's uh, 47 seconds further back on David Brook. So he's dropped uh, about 13 seconds or so on that uh, uh, sector from, uh, Glen Hel from the grandstand to here at Glen Helen, just nine and a bit miles. Uh, so uh, not going to re uh, see any movement there. And, of course, Paul Marley in eighth place. He's over a minute behind Mike Brew. So I think Mike Brew's position is secure. He can nurse the bike home. And if Michael Mace has any problems further up the order and has to uh, have a mechanical uh, retirement, uh, then uh, everybody will shuffle up the place, of course. Uh, Pierre-Yves Bian and Sam Mosley now both threw up the left bridge. Uh, Yves Bian, uh, we'll... Pierre Ebian's lead 32 seconds and we just go back to Tim Glover for the finish of Class C. Yeah, we've got the light on for number 27, Class C. Remember, just the three laps. So Andrew Jackson has made it to Cronk Nimona and uh, looks as if he is going to claim victory here. Well, you can't say that after the classic superbike TT we had yesterday where Michael Dunlop was less than two miles from home and uh, we never uh, got the win at all for him. So it's been pretty steady stuff from Andrew Jackson. He opened up with 100.207 miles per hour on the first lap, 101.578 miles per hour on his second lap, and has just maintained control of this class ahead of Adrian Scaife and Pete Gibson. But it is uh, Andrew Jackson we're about to acclaim here as he's about to take the newcomer's sea race. The chequered flag is being readied. It's about to greet him home here on Glen Crutchy Road to take victory on his first competitive ride around the TT course. And his crew are there punching the air in delight as Andrew Jackson takes victory in the C-Class race. And let's go back to Dave Christian. Yes, uh, welcome back, Tim. Uh, Pierre, Pierre Vibian, we were just saying, through the left bridge. Number 15, Sam Mosley, also through 32 seconds, the gap now. So Mosley just closing in a little bit. Three seconds, he's nibbled away between uh, Glen Helen here and Balaf Bridge. Michael Mace was the man we were watching. He was 39 seconds adrift of second place. Number 16, Michael Mace in third. 39 seconds here. It's now 49 seconds at Balaf Bridge. So Mike Mace dropped another 10 seconds. And uh, with that, we'll quickly go back to Chris in pit lane. Yeah, thanks very much, Dave. The winner of the newcomer seat in there. Only three laps, don't forget, is Andrew Jackson. He's in here now on the Moto3 machine. Yeah, in here he comes. <laughs> Just can't believe it. Number one. There you go. Get him into his spot. There you go on the Falcon electrical machine, electrical Southport machine, and he gets the win. Looking at second in that class at the moment is Adrian Scaife, number 13. Pete Gibson also going quite well. But uh, Andrew will get in, yeah. Nick Jeffrey's going to get straight in. Just going to do a little piece for MGTV. We're just waiting for the other two guys to come through. Another rider just across the line there. Chris Palmer, what's the matter, mate? No, I'm just saying it's uh, noticed the big, the big fuel tank on it so yeah. he can do his three laps. That's uh, interesting to see the big tank on it. It's uh, quite bulky compared to the standard tank. It is, isn't it? Yeah, completely a bit bigger tank. So Jackson just in there, number 27. Where, well, there was a minute and six he was ahead going through the Cronk, the Mona section. And 30 is second. And, uh, yeah, so Adrian Scaife, number 30, your mate, Chris. Uh, he is in second place. And 29, Pete Gibson is confirmed in third. The team are in. Give him a, a little bit of a, a hug and everything. Cheers, mate. He says, let's get that bottle of water. We'll be back with the B-class and the C-class. So number 30 is in second place. He's, <laughs> okay. He's gone straight up. Okay, we'll get a word with him if we can. I think we're ready to go. Andrew, congratulations for the race win. Manx Grand Prix winner. Yeah, happy days. Don't know what to say. Just thanks to all the Falcon team. I haven't done it on my own. It's been a big team effort. So Big, big tank as well. Yeah, well, three laps without, without refueling. So compulsory pit stop. We had to get it in. But 
no, no more fueling, so no time wasted. Just crack on. No issues? No, no bike was perfect all the way around. Well done. Thank you very much. So there you go. There's your winner, Andrew Jackson of the the C class number 29 is uh, Pete Gibbs uh, number 30 sorry he's in here Adrian Scafe is in well done to Adrian don't have number 29 through to us yet uh, we're going to wait to see if he's going to get direct into here he should be and that little air blower you can just hear going on in the background is just to get the, the motor cool again because it's very very hot on that and uh, well it is, it's kind of like a leaf blower doesn't it and it kind of reverses it's, it's it's lashing a load of fuel all over the ground. Just go and tell him he's putting a load of fuel on the ground as well there. Chris is coming out the bottom of there. <laughs> Tom Snow. Tom Snow. Brilliant stuff. So AD Scafe is in. Just about to take his lid off. And I think you were saying, Chris Palmer, you helped Adrian Scafe out a little bit. Where have you gone? There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, he's, uh, yeah, I've given him some advice at Scarborough and places like that. He used to ride a lot of two-stroke bikes, but he's moved over to the dark side on the four-stroke now, as, as many people have these days. You said you'd like to have a go on one of these. No, no, I've, had, I've actually had a go on one, uh, and they're really nice to ride. It's just a 125 chassis, but with the uh, 254-stroke engine put into them. So, yeah, they're a great little bike. Good man. Thanks, Chris. Cheers for that. Don't have number 29. Pete Gibson here, yeah. I think maybe he might have gone straight up the return road. Number 29, yeah. I think he's disappeared. And, uh, and we just go to... Let's go back, in fact, let's head back up to the north of the island. Back to Roy Moore at Ramsey. Leaders are through. Number seven, Pierre Isbian, is uh, through, but he's lost six seconds on the run from the left bridge, but nothing to worry about. 15, Sam Mosley is there in second place, and now Alan Brooks has moved up into third, and he's 56 seconds ahead of set behind Samuel Mosley, but certainly eight seconds now, eight and a half seconds ahead of in a new fourth place, number 16, Michael Mace. It didn't appear to be too bad, but he did look down on the left-hand side off the machine as he came into Ramsey number, number 16, Michael Mace. But he's still got a 27-second advantage in that fourth and fifth place battle over number 18, Lewis Bramwell, who was safely through Ramsey. Here, Lewis Bramwell holding on to fifth place here. Mike Brew not as yet made it to Ramsey, but uh, certainly that might be something to, to think about. But at the same time, the top five are through Ramsey, and that is uh, back to Chris at the pits. Thanks, Roy. Yeah, Adrian Scafe was with us. Adrian, how was that little race on your Moto3? That was, that was a lot of fun. Um, bikes run absolutely lovely, and it's, it's nice to get out there with, uh, without without too much traffic on the course and then just get to concentrate on trying to get lines and trying to get trying to get faster and and learn and just learn it was a, a really good really enjoyed it good fun where are you struggling still i'm probably struggling everywhere but i don't really realize it yet um it's i found it harder of the mountain less less things to refer to i think I'm, i pick up reference points before me markers on the uh, on the road to ramsey but then over the mountain it's a bit a bit more difficult for me but uh I think it probably went better today over there than have done previous. So yeah, the conditions good. good. Lovely, absolutely lovely. Yeah, good. really good. Not no, not too warm, not too cool. No wet, no damp. Really good fun. Good man. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adrian. Cheers. So there's your top two. We're just waiting for the third place man to get back here. We'll get the details in a minute. But I think we're maybe back to Tim in the tower. Yeah, through at the bungalow, we've got Pierre Yibian. He is through, but his lead is down to 20.5. It was 25.9 at Ramsey Hairpin. So uh, maybe a little issue, or he's just getting good boards and managing his lead. But uh, I can tell you, refreshing on the uh, other races, as we know, we've got uh, Andrew Jackson, the winner of the C-Class, Adrian Scaife in second place. And at the lap bridge in the B-Class is Mark Kirby, and he's the only one through at Glen Helen. Mark Kirby, bike number 20 in the B-Class. So uh, let's just go to uh, Dave Christian and have that confirmed. Only just the one bike through in the B, Dave. Yeah, that's correct, Mark Kirby, as, as you quite rightly see him. We're waiting 21, Rob Cairns. He won't be too far away now, but at the grandstand, he was five minutes and three seconds down on uh, Kirby. So uh, there's quite a way to go there. And uh, Ma uh, David Stiff, the uh, third place in Class B, he's a minute and 11 down on Cairns at the grandstand. So uh, until they get here, we can't give you that adjusted time. But uh, uh, looking on the... Uh, uh, 
uh, the live timing system outside of the race computer here. We can say that Mark Kirby just put it in his quickest sector between the Glen Helen and Balaf, so he's not slowing down any at all. He doesn't appear to have any problems. Nice and steady. He's got loads of time to play with as well with a five-minute lead, but uh, uh, so far on this uh, final lap, uh, only one of the B-class riders through here. Back to you, Tim. Thank you very much. At the bungalow, uh, Sam Mosley was in second, but third is number three, Alan Brooks, but he's a minute down. Very near to Cronk Nimona for Pierre Yibian, our winner of the A, potentially, but a quick word with Chris. Yeah, Pete Gibson has got himself down here. He, he didn't get turned into the into the actual um, winner's enclosure and went straight up to Park Fermis. They've just gone and gone. They're just about to do a piece for the MGP TV, but we do not want to miss newcomers, eh, Tim? A French winner, possibly, at the Manx Grand Prix. Back to you. Yeah, and as Roy was saying, we did get him to uh, rack his brain cells and see uh, if we ever had a, a French winner here before, and he couldn't recall one. Roy's fairly encyclopedic, as we know, on that knowledge. But yes, uh, the light has been on. It's on for number 15, uh, Samuel Mosley, in the lead down to 15 seconds. So going to be interesting to see, was he uh, getting managed or was he uh, having a little bit of an issue? But uh, Pierre Yves-Bian should be coming on to Glen Crutchy Road and we're going to have... Uh, the trickler and uh, a French victory here at the grandstand in the newcomers' A race. Checkered flag is ready. Here we go. Ooh la la. Pierre Ibian is the winner of the newcomers A race and he slows down underneath the RST bridge. So a little bit of uh, history potentially here at uh, the grandstand and Samuel Mosley. 15.3 seconds at Cronk Nimona. He is in seconds. But let's go to Chris Kinley and we'll confirm the uh, uh, the other top t uh, three when they cross the line, Chris. <laughs> the top three newcomers see just having a little bit of a cuddle in front of their bikes, Tim. It's a nice picture you see that you're going to get shown around the world. But Pete Gibson has come in here with his lovely VFR 400. Another bike across the line. And let's see with that Mosley. Is that Mosley that's just gone across the line? It was 15.3 at Crog Nimona and the gap at the end of the race. And Bianna's come in. It's 16.569. OK, we'll get that in a minute. But Pete Gibson, third place in the Newcomer C, and that smile is, is a bit wide. What a race. We had a good race on the road. I'm not sure how the timings were, but it was really fun. You were 17 seconds back off third place, anyway. Well, second place, sorry, Winkle. That's close enough. Tell us about the rest of the race. All good? Yeah, we had a bit of trouble last night out in practice. Wasn't happy. Um, we made some adjustments. So short on practice this week. And, yeah, it worked out. Rode really nice. <laughs> you really obviously nice. didn't know where you were in the race, did you? Not a clue, not a clue. Came in out thinking, May maybe, maybe not. No one pointed me in. I've done lap round of pits. Caused a bit of mayhem. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, but you're in here now. Thanks, Chris. Well done. Brilliant. Well done, buddy. Cheers. Thank you very much for that. So there we go. So the A-class is in. <clears throat> Beyond has won by 16 point five six nine of a second 15 sam mosley is in here now in his position and there was big cheers when he's coming and also when the french rider is coming as well I'll let him get himself into position and uh, excuse me come in this one here get yourself into number one spot and here is number 31 no uh, yet number um, no not 31 he's not in here seven yet there you go in the middle go in the middle yet <laughs> just a bit of a, a bit of a scrum down here while we just organize everybody in the French rider 31's just coming and thought he was on the podium. He's getting directed in here, but Sam Mosley's in. We should have in the fastest lap of the race is Sam Mosley there. 116.187. So I'm sure he'll be pleased about that. We might just grab him first, actually, because uh, Beyond's just doing a piece for the TV boys. And uh, Sam Mosley, second place confirmed. And the fastest lap of the race, 116.18 something. So that's happy enough. Wow. <laughs> pa pardon? <laughs> I didn't realise that. Talk us through it then. Talk us through your Manx Grand Prix Newcomers A four lap race. Uh, was one sec. Oh, there we go. It was really good. Uh, caught Mike one thing on the mountain, second place. Knew I had him. And then the second lap, he caught me back up. And I thought, oh, I better go move on. Told me in the pits I was second. Plus five from Alan, 30 from Pierre. Gave up trying to catch Pierre. And... Uh, just focused on getting past Alan, focused on lines and stuff, and uh, apparently set a good lap, so. Yeah, you got 18 seconds back on Pierre on the last lap. 18? Yeah. Woo! If I'd only done that from the start, eh? <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter, you're back home. It's four laps of practice, but a second place in the Manx. What does it mean? Oh, that's awesome. I mean, you just saw me hugging everyone, like, oh, 
Good to finally be here. <laughs> okay, go on, get in there, get the get in the hug there as well. Well done. So a big hug for one. Who, who's that there? Oh, that's one of my sponsors, Mikey. Sir, uh, own Skirt Specialist Stone Quarry. Bought us tyres, quick shifter for this, which was mint and uh, really helped us the last few months. Well done, Sam. Thank you. Excellent. Enjoy it. Cheers. Thanks for that. And Pierre is. Uh, going to go and find Pierre in a second. I think he's just uh, doing a little bit of a, a, t a TV thing. Where is he? Here he is. The winner of the Newcomers A Max Grand Prix. We can't forget about the uh, the, the B class. And Pierre is here and uh, oh, a, big, a little bit emotional. <laughs> well, that's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. Uh, so we have another another French rider just come up to see him. Okay. For the radio. Fantastic. Many, many congratulations. Thanks. Big thanks. Hard work. Yeah, hard work. It's very... I, I'm very happy. I have no word and uh, big, big thanks to my, my team. Yeah. To my team and my parents, my Elodie, my girlfriend. Because difficult season. Difficult season and uh, one month uh, before, finish riding. But Marty for me, Pierre-Yves, I want to ride uh, at the Monks GP and... Uh, fantastic. All worthwhile. Yeah. I have no word. It's no word. Congratulations. Yeah, big thanks. Big thanks. Thank you. Well done, sir. Well done to everybody. Yeah, excellent stuff. And Alan Brooks is in. I said word with Alfie. I'm just gonna just gonna squeeze my little frame in here and well, talk to you before the start of the race. Now we're here at the end of the race in the best place in the world. I well, not the best place. Third. Well, the middle's all right, but you're in the you're in here for the first time. Third. You pray to get pro podium like. Talk us through the race. How was it? Brilliant. An early. I was up on the curb after the Billig Bridge in the first lap. That's you know, the left hand draft I went a bit wide. But then I thought I'd just get your head together and just I just did my race and the the corns went well and you know pit stop went brilliant. Mm, very good. Boys did a brilliant job on that like and I could just see the other two lads going out in front of me, so I thought I knew I'd caught the other two lads who were 10, 20 seconds in front of me. Um, just I don't know where it was um by Blake um, Blaff Bridge like so got near them then got past them pretty quick so I knew it gained 20 seconds on them lot but I knew it was between these three boys or them two boys and um, the lad in the triumph like Michael like I thought yeah. it was going to be close between us lot like but <laughs> yeah no I'm really chuffed to be here like you know uh, the last lap didn't feel as hard as I thought it might have been like third lap was like oh god make this through like and then fourth lap I just thought right just get your head together got in a groove going. didn't you yeah yeah the, the, it just sort of the, the corners fell in a bit better like you know the last two laps around Ramsey, um, around the gooseneck, my front end was going. I could just feel it going twice, like right there, like, but I was running a bit hot in there, so it wasn't quite on the racing line. But um, yeah, both times it went, up, you know, lost front end right there a little bit, but uh, ran wide in a couple of places, but not brilliant. The crowd were brilliant out there, waving me along, like, so it's all fine. Brilliant stuff. Well done. Great race. Thank you very much. Thank well you. Done, guys. Well done, team. Well done. So there's your top three in newcomers A. Now, Tim, let's get to newcomers B. Yes, uh, well, let's uh, just get an update on the newcomers B. And uh, we've got, uh, well, we've got the leaderboard at Glen Helen, first of all. And that shows us number 20, Mark Kirby, was leading. Uh, five minutes and 20 seconds ahead of number 21, Robert Cairns. And third was number 25, David Stiff. And he was six minutes, 42 seconds back on uh, second place. And uh, through Ramsey Hairpin and now through the bungalow is Mark Kirby. So uh, that race is uh, incredibly stretched out. And we're going to have to wait quite some time before we'll have a newcomer's B podium ready to present. But Mark Kirby uh, is, let's see how far away he is from uh, Cronk the Mona on our estimations here. He's around about uh, a minute away. Uh, from Kronk Nimona as uh, it should be Victor Ortega who will be next to come across the line here at the grandstand uh, as uh, uh, Quentin uh, Limousin has just finished number two in the A race at 107.84 number 11 Ben Wales a finisher as well uh, ben Wales at 110.66 on his last lap, so that was impressive. Victor Ortega just across the line now on his Kawasaki at 108.41. Mike Brew, final lap of 108.37. 17, David Brook, final lap of 112.65. Liam Bramwell, a final lap of 113.38. William Piquet, number 31. 
He's in the C-Class across the line, but the last lap a little problematic at uh, 86.49. And the last laps for Andrew Jackson was 100.23. As the light now comes on for number 20 in the newcomer's B race, and that is our race leader, Mark Kirby. And uh, he should be coming home uh, to take what will be uh, quite uh, an isolated victory. The man from Hexham is, uh, well, been in complete control right from the start. And it'd uh, be interesting to see if he got any boards and uh, have they had enough numbers on to tell him how big his lead was because uh, he has been at it right from the start and has just uh, gone away and away and away from the rest of the field in a completely dominant display. Pete Gibson, final lap of 98.4. Adrian Scaife, 98.48. And uh, Pierre Yibian, final lap of 114.32. But it was uh, the quickest of the race from 116.1 from Mosley. But let's see our winner, Mark Kirby, across the line in the newcomer's B race as he should be coming on to Glen Crutchley Road now. And uh, the chequered flag is ready. Newcomers B race to complete our trio of winners. There he is across the line. It is indeed Mark Kirby. And we're going to have to wait quite some time to get second and third confirmed. But it is our race winner in the B, Mark Kirby. A last lap at 105.630 miles per hour. 105.630 miles per hour complete dominance it's been from Kirby let's go down to Chris Kinley he's not in here yet we're just waiting for him to come up uh, the little return road that he has here what, what was the gap that he had as well it was quite a considerable gap wasn't it but he's coming in now to Mark Kirby it's his year, number 20 this is the winner he's coming up the return road now he's going to be pointed in and into the middle there's more bikes coming in well done to Mark there's loads and loads of bikes in here gets a big well, watch your glasses. Oh, steady now. I think the French are getting a little bit excited in here. Let's get him. Uh, it's the wrong one. He's getting the wrong one. There we go. We'll move him round. So there you go. There's your number one, your race winner, Mark Kirby in. He's just getting a quick interview with uh, Nick Jeffries. And the team are already in. North London Darkroom, the photographer's print collective on the side. And the bike is actually called Beautiful Betty. It's a nice little name for that, isn't it? It looks really tricked too. They are six Kawasaki that he's on. I'm just going to have a little check to see if there's anybody else anywhere near. Nobody through Cronk de Mona or the Grandstand else in that class yet. So, yeah, not, not as of yet. We'll just do a refresh on that and see if we can get anybody else through. Uh, get to the right page would be better, wouldn't it? To see technology in me is nearly as bad as Chris Palmer. And, uh, no, nobody else through Cronk de Mona as of yet. He's just doing a little... A little chat with uh, the MGP TV live guys and then we will get the details in a moment from our race winner of the newcomers B Mark Kirby we also have the newcomers A presentation and the other C guys to do so as I say nine riders in total in here and uh, I think uh, yeah Nick just finishing off with the interview there now so any details in the bungalow about second place in the B class Tim not yet, no. Still no, not yet, no. no. They're just through Ramsey, not the bungalow. Okay, wow, That's wow, what I'm okay. saying. The gaps are huge. Okay, just watch that bike rolling forward a little bit. I'm just watching that. So the newcomers, uh, see boys and girls, are just being wheeled away uh, into the, uh, the the pit lane to get it up to the... So there's going to be a lot of bikes for you to look at down there. And the, <laughs> the little Falcon Moto 3 bike, Jason just picks it up, moves it round, because he can. <laughs> <laughs> It's like one of your legs, that isn't it? That bike. Yeah, there we go. Sorry, buddy. There you go. Get passed through. So one more moment. We'll just speak to any moment now. We'll get in to speak to Mark Kirby. He's just about to finish with with with, with uh, Nick. Yeah, I think he's quite happy. It seems to be a man of a few words. So we'll hopefully get a, a little bit of a chat with him if we can in a second, because we're still waiting for the uh, the second place guys. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Don't worry about that. Oh, we certainly have. Many congratulations and, uh, well, a big winning margin in the end, but it don't matter. You're in here with that number one plate. Congratulations. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, um, uh, absolutely sweating here. <laughs> hard work? Uh, hot, very hard work. A lot harder than I thought over four. Two laps was hard, but I managed to sneak a couple of sneaky uh, ibuprofens in beforehand to <laughs> kill the pain on the journey. But, uh, no, all's good. All's good. Very excited. Very chuffed. What's hurting? 
or uh, what isn't my hurt? Back, my back is aching. Yeah, and my neck. My neck, yeah. I didn't. I was actually thinking, my God, there's no way I could do another lap. Coming in at the end, I actually cruised in um, the last bit there. Because uh, it is aching that I'm going to need a good massage tonight, Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't have it. You're quite a big guy. I mean, on, on a little bite, really. Maybe a higher screen next time? Uh, I did wonder that. I, actually, it started off higher. Yeah. But uh, I had to cut it as the race went on because I keep on hitting my head off it. <laughs> ah, you are a big lad. 6'3", 6'4"? 6 6 foot 4. No good on a one two five then? No, 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 definitely not. No. So was it the rest of the race around the track? Conditions absolutely perfect. Oh, they were, they were absolutely perfect. The only place I'm ever a little bit cautious with is uh, oh, I can never remember the name of the pub after the oh goodness, what is it called? Um, Ginger Hall. Going through Ginger Hall, a lot of leaves off the trees there, and it just sort of a little bit of dampness around. But uh, yeah, apart from that, absolutely perfect. How do you deal with, the, with all the bumps and jumps at Ginger Hall? Oh. God, I hate them. They, that's what. That is why my back is aching so much. I have to hover, and hovering with my weight is a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, but where else do we have some fun? Um, Ginger Hall, and then through into oh, what's it called? The hairpin into Ramsey. Ramsey yeah, I had a few moments there where I wasn't quite getting myself down enough, and uh, yeah, didn't get the drive out I wanted. But um, all other than that, great race, great race, good fun. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So there's your winner of the Newcomers B team. We're going to do the presentations up on the podium. Tim Glover. Yeah, they're uh, ready down below. But of course, uh, we want to hear as well from the competitors that have got onto the podium. And that's what we're doing. But we are now ready for the podium for the Newcomers A race. So let's have the fanfare. <laughs> Uh, representing the Halewood Foundation is uh, Monica Florig uh, down there and uh, there are our top three in third Alan Brooks second Samuel uh, Mosley and our winner Pierre Yibian and the trophy for the class uh, A of the newcomers is the uh, Aitchison trophy so ladies and gentlemen in third from Wales on a Honda Alan Brooks In second place, from Wales, on a Yamaha, Samuel Mosley. And the Manx Grand Prix Newcomers A-Class winner from France, on a Yamaha, Pierre Yibian. Uh, the laurel is uh, around the neck and now the HSM Trophy is presented to Pierre Yves and many, many felicitations there to our French winner and now ladies and gentlemen as is customary please be upstanding now for the French National Anthem <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff, and uh, already the champagne has been uncorked there on the podium. And uh, we are about to see the second man in the B race come home, and he's uh, six minutes and five seconds down at Cronk Nimona at number 20, Robert Cairns. 21 20 was the winner. 
And there he is across the line in second place. And the final margin was uh, six minutes, 8.279 seconds. The margin of victory enjoyed by Mark Kirby over second place Robert Cairns. And of course, we still got uh, third place uh, uh, to come as well. I think uh, third man number 25. 25 is David Stiff. He is uh, indicated as uh, at the bungalow. So uh, we'll just wait for our second man to uh, make his way uh, up because there will be some photographs down below. So I'll hand it down uh, to Chris Kinley to uh, have a chat with Robert Cairns, second in B. Yeah. And David Stiff is at Kronk Nimona, two minutes, three seconds back on Cairns. Come on to this side here. Number 21 is here now, Rob Cairns. Well done to him. Gets the... The twin in, he looks absolutely all in puff. We'll just hold that up there and help you up with the back. There you go, because it is a bit of a hill, this. Up, one, two, three. There we go, she's in. So there we go. Gets the gloves off. It will roll forward because it's downhill a bit, isn't it? They'll have to get it level, that's what they have to do. Winning gap in the end, six minutes and 5.311. So, yeah, but he's in. That's the main thing. I love that. I take it this first with 4,000 RPM is the pit lane limiter. I think that's what he's got that bit of tape on there for. <laughs> Let him have a gulp of water first. I think that's more important. And good to see there's a few people stayed around the winner's enclosure for this. He looks like he's ready to swear at me, but don't do that if you, if you, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind. Ready for bed. How is that? Oh, speechless. Tough? <sighs> very tough. Very, very. Can I get my breath back at the moment? What, is it just, is it a fitness thing? Is it just a bit of a handful or? Yeah, you need about very fit to do four laps. Imagine doing six on a superbike. Don't know how them bikes can do it. Bonkers, isn't it? Wild. That's it's definitely hard work out there. So August through the rest of the race. I mean, hard work, obviously, progressively hard on on the last lap or just all the way through. A few bits I still don't know. I'm still learning. I've only got about eight laps before prior to the race. Uh, clutch slipped from lap one. It's been slipping with adjusted right in fully now so there's nothing left yeah. so lucky I get the last lap in on it oh you can smell it actually a bit yeah yeah, yeah it's clean out of it now <laughs> <laughs> well this is nice this is worth it isn't it oh yes every bit out of it <laughs> I'm sure you're going to enjoy it tonight and maybe Friday at the presentation eh yeah maybe one or two the night <laughs> <laughs> well done thank you there you go third place uh, second place is in uh, Robert Ken you say uh, third place is in Eunice I think you said in me here I can confirm Chris is uh, in. Uh, David Stiff, it is from England on a Suzuki. Yeah, he's in, yeah. And he should be with you now. He was two minutes, eight seconds down on Cairns. Good stuff, yeah. He's just coming here now and just having to roll the bike back up the hill a little bit. The least museum peel on the side of that. And there we go. Try and stop it. There we go. He's in. He's done. Oh, he's happy. It's absolutely all in. So your third place man is in, David Stiff. That is good, 25. And just clips the visor up. This takes a big gulp of air. I don't think he can get the visor up, actually. Oh, he's done it. Well done. <laughs> Whoa, he doesn't know what's happening. We're just getting it up on the stand for you. There we go. We'll roll forward a bit, so be careful about that, because we're on a little bit of a hill. It is starting to roll. It's all right. Just hold that there, Joe. Thanks very much for that. I'll let him take his glove off. The right one's off. The right one's just about to come off. The left one's off already. i said this many, many times. And, uh, well, there's some people over there, I think, wishing you well. Just over there. There you go. There's the fan club. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, that's nearly a Bruce Anstey size smile, that is. Uh, everyone tells me I look like him, to be honest. You do a little bit, actually, don't, I don't you? Know why, but I'd like to meet him if he's still here. But... He is still here. He'll be around, no doubt. How does that feel to be dragged in here, to not dragged in here, to be put in here? It feels really good, actually. I put a lot of time and effort into this, and we finally got here and done it. So, yeah, brilliant, excellent. Uh, has there been some years where you thought you're not going to make it here, and then it just all clicked into place? Yeah, yeah, there has. I wanted to come here back in... 2010 or something like that and then it's just been short circuit racing and then finally now we're here so and in here and in this bit yeah. it's unreal isn't it it's quite surreal because you've obviously seen pictures of you know of winners Max Grand Prix TT winners in here and now you're going to have the honour of being one of those that is, that's just awesome isn't it <laughs> it's brilliant I mean I got it that I can't I'm not out for another race because I couldn't afford it and whatsoever but this is just brilliant no matter what, you know, we had a bad start to the week and it's ended awesome, so what can we say? <laughs> yeah, you did, you blew up in Union Mills on your outlap, didn't you? That's correct, yeah. So thanks to Kevin Eager, who gave us an engine, which is amazing. So yeah, brilliant. 
Get up on that podium and enjoy it. Thank you very much. Well done, David. Well done. So there you go, Tim. There's the top three in all the three classes of the newcomers A, B and C. We'll hand it back up to you. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Chris Kinley. Well, we'll try and uh, just uh, give you the... Uh, uh, leaderboard uh, for the A race then outside the top three and in fourth place was number 16 Michael Mace a last lap at 110 miles per hour he was 21 seconds back on Alan Brooks but clearly short shifting as we heard uh, coming out of Glen Helen and a few bike issues fifth was number 18 Lewis Bramwell and uh, Lewis Bramwell was 15.8 seconds down and that's uh, Russell Dodds uh, just finishing in the uh, B class, that will be. Yes, it is. He's the last one. Uh, a Suzuki-powered machine there in the B class. So fifth place was uh, Lewis Bramwell, Michael Mason fourth. Sixth was uh, number five, Mike Brew, the man from Kurt Michael on his Kawasaki. Just looking at the times, 113.378 from Lewis Bramwell in fifth on his last lap, 112.647 for David Brook, and uh, it was only 110.022 for Michael Mace. So that shows you how much uh, of an issue he was having down there. So uh, we are now ready to go with our uh, next podium, and this one is for the newcomers' C race. So let's bring on the fanfare. Riders make their way up there onto that famous rostrum in the uh, middle of pit lane. And the trophy coming up as well behind. So in the newcomers Manx Grand Prix C class, third from England on a Honda, Pete Gibson. In second place from England, on a Honda, Adrian Scape. And the winner of the Manx Grand Prix Newcomers C-Class from England, on a Honda, Andrew Jackson. Yeah. 